my glasses on, do I? Well, g'day again. It's um, another week. Yeah, it's been. Yeah. Uh, we're in Western Australia. They let us in. We've, yeah, um, a long way to go. Yeah, we in. we went all the way down to Wyndham. Um, it's funny actually when we got there. We because they've got this check-in thing in Australia where you've got to when you change states you've got to um, let them know you've arrived and do a uh, test and stuff. And anyway, we got there and we went to cop shop and they said, "Oh, we don't know what to do," and no one knew anything about how to check in. So, well, we just talked to the cop and said, "Well, we're here," and he said, "Yep, no worries, mate." But uh, well, Wyndham was great. We met some awesome people, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we. Um, oh, you'll see on the video anyway. We just we got free beer, we got free transport, and everyone was so friendly and. Yeah, it was magic. Yeah, it was lovely. We yeah, caught up with some friends from um, that we were in the marina with, uh, Ryan and Jess. It was lovely to catch up with them. And uh, then as we sailed out of Wyndham, we passed another friend, um, Rick and Dave. So uh, it's been, yeah, social. And uh, it's nice to be in WA if we're officially yeah. in the Kimberley. Yes. Uh, yeah. The Kimberley... St- well, starts at the border of NT and, and um, WA. So we're officially in the Kimberley. We're officially in WA. We're officially checked in. Yeah. Um, thanks to Mike the Copper. Um, oh, last night's storm. Mm. Crazy. Most scared I've ever been on a boat at anchor. Um, ever. 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 It was crazy. Horrific. It was crazy wind. The wind was loved. I don't know if our wind instruments measure measuring correctly, but I saw um, 68 knots on it. It was crazy. It was the wildest storm I've ever been in at anchor. Anyway, you'll yeah. see it all. Yeah. Um, what else? That's about it. That's it. Thanks yeah. for watching, and yeah. we'll see you next time. See you next week. Um, thanks for watching. And, yeah, catch you later. See ya. Hey, door. I just checked the chart, and we're going to be in Western Australia in 3.5 miles. So, um, we've got all our permits to go into Western Australia. Now we've just got to sail all the way down to Wyndham to do our check-in. It's like going to another country. But anyway, you got to do what the law says, so... We've got um, about a three day round trip just to check in to Western Australia. So while we're down there, we, because we've motored so much, we fuel up as well. But um, yeah, just heading down there to do the, the right thing and uh, check into the state of Western Australia, or some people think it's uh, another country. But anyway, we'll be there in uh, 30 minutes. There. again we're in a mess. The brewery is out in the galley. Magnus is finishing off the solar panels. Oh that's a good place for the kegs. Where is that? Behind the uh, scupper oh, thing. Yeah, that's where they've been. Huh, nice. So he's uh, finishing the solar panel installation. So that's for the big one up there, as well as two above, um, what no, is the bin, bimini. bimini up here. There's two up there. So what are you doing now, babe? I am having a cup of freshly made tea. <laughs> Better than old tea, oh. I usually think. Yeah, especially when you put honey in it, it's beautiful. It's good West Australian, I mean, uh, Queensland honey. So what? what is that in your hand that looks pretty... These are solar um, 
connectors. Yep. They're, I've never seen them used anywhere except solar and they're specifically made and engineered to confuse you because the black wire goes to the plus with a red uh, end and the red wire goes to the minus but on the other end of course they're the right way around so whenever you're doing solar panels you do so on the solar panel you do what it says but on the lead that connects you do the opposite and of course the pin has a socket inside it and the socket has a pin inside it so that level that is you've got to be highly educated to do solar and is that the should i call it cable that you were going to use or is this just yeah, a this test is, cable this is um right it's a a three a 400 watt panel runs at 50 volts so 50 volts um 400 watts is about 50 i haven't can't be bothered doing the maths so it's about 15 amps 20 amps this ca this cable here is six square mil uh, and i've worked out the cable run and we're going to have a volt drop that's negligible so therefore um, we can use this cable if we had a longer cable run or we were a bigger solar panel you'd need to run eight or ten mil but we can use six mil <coughs> for this run which is handy because i've only got six mil on board well if you didn't if you if that's all you had you just have to suffer the voltage drop wouldn't you or double the run you just put the red and black together and call and put red heat shrink on one end and black heat shrink on the other end and then you'd have you double your carrying capacity so there's a way around it oh there's always a way around every single problem always what's that funny tape you've got there self-amalgamating tape that's got what's the some people call it butyl tape oh, I was looking at some the... people call it self-bonding tape some people call it rubber weld tape um i've just grown up with this self-amalgamating tape so because normally um solar cable is thicker than this it's got a thicker insulation they make the they make the um, compression o-ring slightly larger so i've just got to increase the diameter of the cable slightly so that the compression o-ring or compression seal um, works properly and there we go so now well now we're in full sunlight here so that's that's punching out a heap of volts and a heap of amps so you don't really just want to connect this into the system so what you could do is throw a towel over the solar panel before you connect it in so i've got a towel here ready um, you don't have to cover the whole solar panel it's just covering half the solar panels enough um, and then you can connect this is just a proof of concept i haven't i haven't run the cables through or anything yet i'm just getting cable length sorted um, terminating these ends the other ends are easy we can change the length of so that's the next thing to do connect this in then have a look on the app on the iphone on the victron app and we can see how much current we're getting out of this panel this one above me is already connected so i can show you both of them in a minute this is turtle bay on the cross island we haven't seen any, any turtles yet but we're hopeful turtle tracks yeah now i'll go and make sure it's charging what a mess I've taken half the stuff out of this cabin. It's our storage cabin. This is our shed just with dive gear. This one's for food storage. I've taken half the stuff out. It's a mess. But anyway, I'll see if we're connected. Yeah, we're connected. And it's charging. Now I'm just going to find my phone. So the app is this one. We can, we can see here we've got the Dodger panel. It's connected via Bluetooth. And that's putting out 42 volts at 0.8 of an amp. It's up on the dodger and it's a bit shaded. 
Um, so we're putting in, because it takes the 43 volts, converts it to 12.8. So putting in 2.5 amps off the dodger panel. Now if we go to the other one, which is the aft panel, it's putting in 11 amps. Wow. So total network power, the, what it does, it networks the whole thing via Bluetooth. We're putting in 180 watts, but the sun's just come up, so we've got a, the panels aren't up to full. And what would full be? Um, that aft one would put in 30 amps, and this one put in 20, so it's 50 amps. But anyway, it's early in the morning, it's only, what is the time? 7.30 in the morning and we're already cranking in 11 amps into the system with only two of the five panels connected. Still got three more panels to put in. And um, so the plan is that, at, so then we can also go here. I've got a, a smart shunt in here and we have a look at the shunt, which is also Bluetooth. And we can see our batteries are at 96%. Um, we're putting in 10.3, 10.7 amps. We're also sucking out power, but um, it, so that's what's going into the batteries, right? Plus the two fridges are running and all other bits and pieces, chargers, etc. So we're putting into the system 10 amps, which is pretty good for this time of the morning, 7.30 in the morning, with two panels out of the five putting in 10 amps. So by lunchtime we'll be at 100%. Um, we'll also be putting in 40 amps of power so we can run the water maker, um, do whatever we want, and it won't affect our state of charge. Hopefully that makes some sense. And this is the software on the laptop, which gives you far more information. You can set up a lot more things. At the moment this is the um, shore power box or generator. So you can see we're not connected to shore power or a generator. This is our inverter charger. You can see it's in the inverting mode and it's supplying AC loads on board the boat of 11 watts. So it's, we're just charging a laptop, I think. Um, it's also going down here and connecting into the system. You can see here, we're currently PV, photovoltaic, which is the solar panels, charging 180 odd watts. That's coming dotted line across into our shunt or our battery system which tells us we're 96% charged that's not bad for 7.30 in the morning um, we've got 111 watts going into the battery system it's at 13.1 volts 8.5 amps going in and we've got DC loads on board of 50 watts 52 watts um, like lights and fridges and things like that. So we're not drawing much current, either AC or DC. Um, we're putting in a little bit of charge and it's all looking pretty happy for 7.30 in the morning. have already started for this trip. Yep. Sand flies around so it won't hang around in here too long. Pretty awesome anyway. Yes. So calm and beautiful. 
beautiful. Like normal mangroves, are they? I'm not convinced they are. Yeah, a matter of leaves, just different species. to Wyndham, well to the port just outside of Wyndham. So we will anchor here and I think we're probably going to have to get fuel tomorrow because the fuel place closes at 3 and it's now half past 12, 1ish. So we'll just chill here and wait till the morning and try and get into town. It's about, I don't know, 8 kilometres but there are no, there's no public transport so We'll have to work out how we're going to get the fuel. We could walk, but then it's heavy to carry it back. So we'll work it out. See ya. Going into shore to stretch our legs. Yeah, over the ground. This is the Atlantis float canoe. Right. Um, it's four metres long, one metre wide, um, and it's a fiberglass copy of the original um, German Junkers um, seaplane float. The original canoe was made from the floats of the plane after it, the aviators became lost up here in the Kimberley, and they landed safely, went ashore, took one of the floats off, converted it into a canoe, and tried to get help. They paddled this thing around for 40 days up around here. No food, little water, and they did survive in the end. I think they were found by originals and they were, it was all good. And then it was put back on the plane and, they, and refueled and later on subsequently they took off. So yeah, this is a replica of that float. They're beautiful. Yeah. It's a burn. Yeah, looks like a bone, isn't it? Is it bone? Okay, what happened? See this boat behind us? We just came over to say g'day and have a chat and because they do Kimberley tours and of course we're going with Kimberley and um, one of the fellas, one of the crew, just the chef, comes up with like six cans of beer, we'd like some beer. We go, yeah, because the guests just left and left, left them with so much beer. Um, and then Lucy comes out and she bought a whole crate of beer. Ice cold, Peroni Caldra. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, life's good. And then we walked, we got, we walked down the jetty at the boat ramp and first person we met was Ross, who's got the barge up here. And I just said to him, do you know where the, he's, no, he said, what are you looking for? I said, look, just looking for a bin, because we've had a bit of rubbish. And he said, I oh, used to use mine. And then he said, oh, do you need a car? And we go, uh, it'd be handy, because we've got to get some fuel. And he said, yeah, use me ute. So tomorrow morning, we've got his ute to use to go shopping and to get some fuel and, the people here, and then we met Pixie. We joined the local Wyndham Yacht Club, uh, who Pixie's a Commodore, and so we're members of that now. And then, oh, we've just it's just been beautiful. We've been here like a couple of hours, and um, yeah, pretty happy. What a start to the adventure.
What do you reckon, Wayne? I can't believe it. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> and the lovely thing is, Lucy said, we'll see you in the Kimberley popover if you ever if yeah. You ever see us. So, yeah, yeah, uh, so we'll go over and see so them. Cool. It's just, oh, beautiful. Yeah. So lucky, so fortunate to be doing this and meeting these people. Yeah. Cheers. trips I think yeah. the first load done thanks Ross yeah made it very easy we left Wyndham and we've headed out um, of the river. This is Red Point and this little bay where we're going to spend the night is called Still Bay, I think. Still Bay? Yes, yeah, Still Bay. So it's a beautiful, calm, sort of early evening. Very pleasant. Good morning. We're just about to leave Still Bay. Uh, had a lovely evening and we are heading up and out of the river. Um, back to across Island today and then we'll make our way to the Berkeley. Yeah. Not much wind. Sailing to, I don't know, we might get to La Crosse, back to La Crosse Island, spend the night there. Uh, it's got a tiny bit of breeze, so I thought I'd put the spinnaker up and we just um, slowly coast down the river. And which river would that be? Uh, the Ord River. Well, it's really the Cambridge Gulf. The river sort of starts at the end of the Gulf. But um, it's a very narrow Gulf, it's more like a river. It's filling. Yeah. Look at that. How pretty. And we're going half a knot? Yeah. In the wrong direction? <laughs> yep. The tide's pretty strong Which here. Which direction do you want to go, babe? There. <laughs> and we're going there.
sense the, the storm coming, so I pull all the cushions in, and then bang. I was going to let more anchor chain out, but I went, quick enough. Yeah, it's down to 30 knots. We've dragged a fair bit. We're in 22 metres of water now. Whoa. We're not much anchor chain. We're 40 metres of anchor chain. 50 metres. So we're like two to one at the moment. Yeah, now here it comes again. 60, 70 knots. 